welcome to this session, uh, which is a historical session about microphones. We are speaking especially about condenser microphones, and uh, the first company who made uh, condenser microphones was Neumann. And so I have the pleasure to introduce first my appreciated colleague, Stefan Poiss. Yes, Neumann Company is more than 80 years old and doing condenser microphones, but I wouldn't like to bother you with any kind of microphone models or things like this. So it came up to my mind that I personally uh, am with Neumann for 35 years now, in May exactly. I was very surprised to find a um, comparison about AB powering and phantom powering, which was indeed a real topic in those days. But then in the 70s, um, it was an important topic for Neumann to look for the transient response of microphones. With large diaphragm microphones, as for example the, uh, the U87, it is a bit wider here compared to the miniature microphone and a bit more overshoot and a bit more self-oscillation. It's because of the size of the membrane. In the 80s, we spent a lot of time with susceptibility of microphones to strong AF and RF fields. But later on, maybe nowadays, eight years ago, we were very happy to have this very comfortable so-called GTEM cell. GTEM uh, stands for Giga Transversal Electromagnetic. This is some kind of a horn um, and a device which is creating RF signals in the range from 30 megahertz up to 2.7 gigahertz. You can open this cell here to introduce any microphone or... Within the last 10 years, a lot of examinations took place with capsule distortion by means of different frequency measurements. And just uh, to end up, some figures to the development of microphones dynamic range and self-noise level. Well, now I have to introduce the next spe speaker, uh, who is uh, Uli Apel. This is the beginning, yes. It was Thomas Alva Edison who invented the tube, but he did not know it. Okay, the microphones went a bit smaller, and so there was a developer in Berlin that was uh, Mr. Hiller, he developed this tube to be smaller in the 50s, and that was called MSC2. Uh, how do they realize that the tube has special low noise? Okay, that's another tube, EF86. It's now in the uh, modern range of Microtech Gefell microphones, the M900. And then you have here, for example, a microphone, and this is the, amplifi uh, the amplified signal comes out here. Thank you, Uli. And, uh, well, he was speaking for Microtech, and I think Microtech will not be unhappy if I make the note that they are not exclusively making two microphones. Let's listen to him, and then we know whether he's not doing a really good job already now. Microphone. Well, I have a slide which per is, I think, showing the first microphone. This was Dr. David Hughes, 1878, using three French nails. I don't know why they have to be French. But this one from 1927 was used for the Siemens Klang film system, and it was deliberately made uh, directional, um, to eliminate uh, or reduce the off-stage noises in the original uh, film studios. Mm. 
We'll proceed with the microphone and headphone session. Uh, next up, we've got Jörg Vukka, who was born in Berlin in 1942. Thank you for listening to a small sample of this AES tutorial. To watch the full-length version, you can visit our AES tutorials page at www.aes.org slash publications slash tutorials.